Thank you, Mr. Chair. First of all, cordial greetings on behalf of all members of the Parliament of Montenegro. And I want to express my gratitude for the invitation and send my warm congratulations to the European Parliament for this significant jubilee. The Citizens' Assembly serves as a new instrument in Montenegro and it is a result as a of a joint project of the Montenegrin and European Parliaments. With this regard, I express my gratitude to European Parliament for acknowledging the Parliament of Montenegro in 2021 as a relevant partner for the implementation for the respective project, which set new democratic standards in Montenegro. At that moment, in the time of implementation of new projects in the Parliament of Montenegro, which under then leadership of Mr. Alex Sabecic essentially changed the previous practice of Montenegrin parliamentarism. Nearly 100 innovations have been carried out in Parliament. The Parliament reformed its operation on a regular basis. There were no crises of parliamentarism at that time, and the institutional memory has been kept. Procedures and rules have been changing. It was a very favourable environment for implementing innovation such as Citizens' Assembly. I remind you that Citizens' Assembly was held in Podgorica on two occasions, first time in October 2021 and the second time in September 2022. Both times the same group of 53 citizens has discussed the issue of corruption in healthcare and in public sectors. Citizens have been selected by means of a random sampling method through two non-governmental organisations engaged in the project. Citizen recommendations, as previously said, have been presented and jointly discussed at conferences and in the plenum held after Citizens' Assembly. Members of Parliament, uh, members of European Parliament, citizens' representatives, non-governmental organisations involved in the project and foreign experts in the area of deliberative democracy have taken part in the conferences. Recommendations were very distinctive, both with respect to their forms and their contents, and a range from very precise ones, for example, for the restriction of the privileges of public officials or employment in public sector, to less specific recommendation and general formulation. Recommendation encompass free views and assessments of citizens that, to a certain degree, exceeded the framework of applicable positive legal regulation or point to unfortunately insu insufficient information of citizens about the operation of institutions and the like. The aim of a redefined concept of the Second Citizens' Assembly 2022 was uh, to review the level of carrying out the original recommendation uh, and uh, to establish priority recommendation, redefine old ones or issue new ones uh, which uh, citizens consider to be relevant for the continuation of the operation. Of course, it is not uh, important only for citizens to deliberate and come up with the proposals, but most importantly for those proposals to result in certain change. After the first assembly, the, when the then president, Alex Sabecic, for the first time in history in the, of the parliament, organized a conference on a budget, which was organized exactly on the basis of one of the recommendations from the citizens' assembly regarding the need to increase the transparency in deliberation and de decision-making procedures in the area of budget policy. In front of all the members of parliament and citizens in the TV live broadcast, all budget units presented their remarks with a reference to the proposal for the law on budget. The conference has been broadcasted live on parliamentary channel and citizens were able to follow discussion via YouTube and the official accounts on the parliament on social networks. The key findings resulting from the discussion have been collected in the brochure which was made available to the interested parties. According uh, to the uh, citizen, furthermore, a month after Citizen Assembly was held, then President convened the sitting of the Parliament and proposed for the agenda that the Parliament adopt the amendments to the law of public sector pay pursuant to the recommendation number 20 of the Citizens Assembly. With the adoption of the referred law, the salaries of doctors and university professors have been increased, thus creating the requirements for the largest salary increase. A part of recommendation generally corresponding to the community views refer to improving the financial status of employees in health, healthcare and judiciary uh, as the profession particularly exposed to the corruption. 
Apart from this, uh, the material and financial status in the fields of judiciary and prosecutor's office, dealing especially, especially with combating organized crime, corruption, terrorism, has improved. Additionally, encouraged by the citizen recommendation above, about the need for greater level of transparency, all MPs and leadership activities can be presented on parliamentary channel, press conferences have been broadcasted alive, and for the first time, Parliament of Montenegro is represented on all social networks. Soon after, the management of Parliament was uh, discharged from office and the implementation of recommendation has not continued. That is, the Parliament has not dealt with uh, the citizen recommendation. A significant reg regression has occurred instead. Therefore, for example, the current management of Parliament fails to publish information regarding the expenditures, costs and so on. The experience of Parliament of Montenegro in implementing this innovative instrument is positive. Parliament is continuously committed to transparency and openness of the institution, resulting in being the most open parliament in the region. However, transparency itself is not sufficient. Citizens opt for greater level of involvement in decision-making. Citizens have also positively assessed their participation in citizens' assembly. This process enabled them to better understand the other views and, in certain cases, to review their own opinions after hearing experts and discussing given topics. For the conclusion, the first Citizens' Assembly represents a great achievement and a success for Montenegro, as the Parliament of Montenegro is first institution having directly involved the citizens in its operation in such manner. General assessment is that quality of participation and engagement of citizens was outstanding and it should be highlighted that the citizens expressed high levels of culture of dialogue and tolerance. This was also seen during the adoption of recommendations which were voted by the citizens by two-thirds majority. This as well serves as a reminder that if citizens from different regions, levels of education and beliefs can achieve it, this should be even easier for politicians to do it. Furthermore, perhaps for the next Citizens' Assembly, more difficult topics, dividing society and being difficult to result in a common position, should be included, since there is a general agreement with regard to the issues of corruption. However, when these issues were selected, we in Montenegro did not know that Montenegro would enter a time of new, deeper divisions, institutional crisis. We had believed that we were in entering a period of consolidation and strengthening of the institution. The conclusion is also that many recommendations can be carried out, that this project helps to prevent MPs being distant from the citizens, that citizens better understand the role of MPs. It fosters the accountability of MPs for the obligation assumed from the political programmes and also enhances the inclusive decision-making process. Apart from the implementation of certain recommendations, we will advocate, at least I can speak on behalf of the party which I pertain to, to take a legal and amendment initiatives, continue the process of implementing those recommendations that can be applied, respecting the constitutional role of MP and the legal order. As the Member of Parliament by the Democrats, we consider the institutionalization of the Citizens' Assembly through the presence of citizens at the committee meetings during uh, discussions about the, um, about the implementations of recommendations or during the discussion at the plenum where recommendations are potentially adopted or applied. We take this opportunity to once again express our gratitude to European Parliament for continued support to the Parliament of Montenegro, both political and expert-wise, in attaining our key foreign policy goals. We expect that the European Parliament would continue to implement consistent politics when it comes to Montenegro and the Western Balkan countries, and that the enlargement policy will be at the top of the agenda in the coming period. And recently adopted European Parliament resolution corroborates with this support. The whole world refers to the so-called crisis of democracy as we know it, with the elections and political parties as the forefront of the process. It is clear that citizens feel excluded or insufficiently included in the process impacting their lives. This is particularly noticeable in underdeveloped democracy, that is, in the first stages of democratization of society, such as in Montenegro, where political parties are absolutely dominant over the social space and, I would say, sometimes misuse it. 
The Conference on the Future of Europe is one of the methods in which citizens can be heard and included. All advanced ideas and examples of good practice that support threatening of democratic capacities of our country, such as the Citizens' Assembly, are more than welcome and we hope for their full impulse and progress. Thank you.